Welcome to Beer and Iron's Beer Berry Cobbler Recipe cooked in a Camp Cast Iron Dutch Oven. This is one of the most surprisingly satisfying and extra easy recipes I have. There'll be no need to plan for leftovers for this one because there ain't gonna be none, that's for sure. It's cobblery, fluffy, berry, buttery, and lemony. Yes, lemony. You'll love the lemon liveliness of this beer berry bait. I'm going to pre-prepare for this recipe at home for many different reasons, with the biggest reason being the frozen berries. I want my berries to be mostly thawed when I get ready to cook this recipe in camp. The berries will be pre-prepared and packed frozen and used to keep other things cold in our ice chest or cooler. And, like ice in an ice chest or cooler, they'll thaw out soon enough. First, we'll talk about the tools we need. I'm going to use a microplane for this recipe. You could also call a microplane a zester. You don't need a microplane for this recipe, but it makes the process a little easier. If you don't have a microplane or a zester, just use the small side of a cheese grater. We'll need a teaspoon and a tablespoon measuring set. We'll need a one cup, half cup, and a quarter cup measuring cup set. We'll need a mixing bowl and maybe one or two rubber spatulas. We'll only be taking the one bowl, spatula, and a one cup measuring cup with us to camp. You'll need two separate one gallon sized zipper bags. Also, a container is handy here and I'll show you why in a moment. Next, let's cover the ingredients. I'm gonna classify each ingredient group as wet ingredient, dry ingredient, and the ingredients you'll pack to count. The wet ingredients. Store these ingredients in their own one gallon zipper bag. Don't mix the dry and wet ingredients until you're ready to bake once you get to count. You'll need a lemon for this recipe. We'll use the zest from one lemon. I suggest you start with a teaspoon or two to see how you feel about the flavor. Me? I use a lot of lemon zest in my cobbler. Blackberries. Really, any fruit will work for this recipe, but I like blackberries the most. You could use fresh blackberries or even some fresh dewberries. Frozen is what I'm going to use for this recipe. You'll need four cups of blackberries, and we're going to need some time for them to thaw. But don't worry with this. They'll thaw out plenty enough in the ice chest or cooler. You'll need a half a cup of sugar. We're going to use more sugar later, but for the wet ingredients, we're going to use a half a cup of sugar. Our beer. This recipe will be tangy, lemony, and sweet. You could use a citrusy beer, a sour, or a sweet porter or stout. I like going with a dark, sweet porter or even a stout. This coffee stout by Bombastic is not too sweet, but just sweet enough. We're only going to use one-fourth of a cup from this pint of beer. That'll leave most of this beer for enjoying the old-fashioned way. Cheers! Preparing your wet ingredients is a simple process. Set up a bowl or a container to support the zipper bag. Add four cups of frozen or fresh blackberries to the bag. Add one half cup of sugar to the bag of berries. Add one fourth cup of beer to the bag of berries and sugar. More is not always better with this recipe. You don't want your berry mixture to be too wet and you'll see why in a bit. Add the lemon zest to taste. Me, I like most of the lemon zest. If your first attempt is too lemony or not lemony enough, try, try again. To each lemony likeness to his or her own. And consider your beer. If it's citrusy, less lemon is more lemon here. Once your berries, sugar, beer, and lemon zest are in the bag, mix everything up very well. Get most of the air out of the bag and fold it away in the ice chest, cooler, or refrigerator. If you're going to make this recipe right away, just leave the berry mixture out and let the berries thaw. The ingredients you will pack to camp will be the milk and butter. Though considered wet, neither the milk nor the butter go into the berry mixture. Mm -hmm. 
For the dry ingredients, we'll set out a bowl or a container to support our one gallon zipper bag. Add two cups of white flour. Add one and a half cups of sugar. Add one tablespoon of baking powder, a tablespoon. Then add one teaspoon of salt. I'm using pink salt, but regular white table salt will work fine. Once your flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt are in the second zipper bag, mix everything up very well. Then let the excess air out of the bag. Now we have everything ready to pack to camp. Our dry ingredients, our wet ingredients, our milk, and our butter. If you're enjoying this video, consider giving Sule a thumbs up, selecting that subscribe button, and give a little ring on that dinner bell. This week's weather was doing fantastic. Figured I'd get out and about for a nice day in the woods for a cook drove almost to the area I planned on cooking at and realized I forgot my briquettes. Yes, it happens. Came back home, drove all the way back out there to find the gate across the road. Drove back home and decided to have a patio cook and just make an afternoon day off from work treat. However, making this at home results in having to share. I love my family, but well, you'll see when you taste it later. Wanted to both enjoy this treat today and try out a new charcoal chimney a viewer sent me this week. It fits right along in my grab and go gearbox here and it's the same size as my license plate windscreens. Packing that other charcoal chimney was kind of a hassle. This folding one makes it much easier. So a shout out to my friends over at Pilot Rock for the gift. Thank you, Mr. Craig. I appreciate you much. I'm gonna get the briquette started. I'll start with a few match-like briquettes to work as a starter for my hardwood briquettes I'll add later. I'll be baking this in a 12-inch shallow camp cast iron Dutch oven. Using the Times 2 guideline, I'll need at least 24 briquettes to bake this cobbler. For more information on heating the camp cast iron Dutch oven, follow the link in the description. We ain't in no kind of hurry, and I ain't driving. I figured I'd finish off that coffee stout from Bombastic now while I let my briquettes heat up. Now I'm going to add at least 24 hardwood briquettes to my charcoal chimney here. I'm going to get my 12 inch regular or shallow camp cast iron Dutch oven ready. It's a cold day. Before I put that pot right over that fire, I'm going to pre-warm the Dutch oven by placing a mess of briquettes around the oven. This is really more of a habit of mine. I often pre-warm before I preheat. There's my dry ingredients, my wet ingredients, my milk, and my butter. We've not added oil to our wet ingredients. This butter is essentially the oil or the fat we're gonna use in our cobbler. I need to bring that butter up to a fry-ready temperature. I don't wanna burn it, but I need it to be very, very hot. It'll turn dark, that's for sure. Move the briquettes from around the oven to under the oven. I've got about 30 briquettes here. Place a whole stick of butter, eight tablespoons of butter, into that pot. Put the lid back on the pot and let's mix things up. Add the dry ingredients to the bowl. Now add two cups of milk to the dry ingredients. Use the rubber spatula and mix everything up very well. This is gonna be the batter for our cobbler. Pour that batter over and into that hot pot of butter. It'll look thin, but don't worry, just wait and see. Once the batter is in the hot pot, add the wet ingredients. We're gonna add the berry mixture. 
try to spread it out as evenly as you can. If there's any juice left in the bag, don't worry with it, just discard it. Put the lid back on the pot and remove the Dutch oven from the fire. Place 16 briquettes on the top of the Dutch oven. Then place eight briquettes under the oven. Set seven in a circle with one in the center. Or use your own pattern. After 10 minutes, turn the Dutch oven. Turn the lid in one third of a turn in one direction. and then turn the whole pot one-third of a turn in the opposite direction. After another 10 minutes, or 20 minutes total, take a peek at your cobbler. If you feel it needs more time, then turn the lid and pot once again and wait five more minutes. Oh yeah, that's about it right there. A little bubbling at the edges is perfect. You don't want this to dry out completely like a cake. Cobblers have fruit and need to be a bit bubbly, kind of like our beer. Pull all the briquettes and get the pot off the fire. That's absolutely perfect right there, I tell you what. It's gonna be fruity, lemony, and fluffy. Almost like a heavy cake-like crust. Oh, and that's some goodness right there. I appreciate you all for watching this video, I do. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and giving a little ding on that dinner bell. Cheers, y'all. You all keep on cooking in those cast iron beauties and enjoying those frosted glasses of that fermented barley pop. We'll see you next time on BeerAndIron.com.